and so on. But in this case, Hull City players and football generally has responded admirably. Damien, thanks very much indeed. Now, normally on a Tuesday we have Ref Watch. Today, though, we're on Injury Watch. And to take a look at the club's most affected and to provide an in-depth analysis of them is Dr Paul Hobra. And to help us give a, a player's insight, I suppose, is Ian Dowie. Ian, Paul, good to see the both of you. So, Arsenal against Manchester United at the weekend, four days until the big one. A tongue-in-cheek remark from some people saying it should be postponed because of injuries to both clubs. But they are clearly both having a bit of a nightmare at the minute, Paul. Yeah, they're having some big issues, aren't they? And, and I think you just need to look at this clash as being a high-scoring game. I think, you know, most people are pitching it as perhaps being a high-scoring draw. The, the injuries these guys are sustaining, look, it, it's, it's, is it this kind of hangover from the World Cup? Are some of the guys possibly pulling up with, with these injuries? Some of them are acute, some of them are building up over time. You've got to perhaps look at, at the number of games they're playing, perhaps think about what could be done to take some of these players back a stage maybe deconstruct them, put them back together a little bit stronger before the start of the season. You look at you know, what's happened at Manchester United since Louis van Gaal has come into the position at Old Trafford. 39 different injuries while the Dutchman's been at the helm. He's had seven different partnerships at centre-half. Yeah. It's, it's a, you know, already a long way away from the Ferdinand and Vidic days, isn't it? Sure. I mean, you can't do too much about Rojo with a, with a shoulder. And you, you may be dislocating the shoulder or you know, certainly damaging the air around it. But my view is that that happens sometimes with new manager syndrome. You come in, he may train at a different intensity than the last manager. You know, as a result, that, tr that switch in intensity can bring about injuries. And as a result, you have to adjust it. The Arsenal scenario, don't forget, this comes from a team at Arsenal who the manager changed four pitches or built in four new pitches because he was worried about calf injuries. Mm. So he's very concerned about it. Arsenal, I think, would be more of a concern because it's been going on for a few years. But Louis van Gaal is certainly hamstringed by injuries. But why do you think, then, from a physiotherapist's point of view, why has it all happened at the same time under Van Gaal? I think that you make a really valid point there in that there's, there's been a change. You know, whenever you get a change, there might be slightly different uh, things that the strength and conditioning guys pay attention to. The players have got to sit into that new regime. There might have been some undefinable aspect at, at the, uh, you know, the way the club was run before or the previous club they were at, which was keeping these guys match fit. And, and it's very difficult to take a step back and work out what that was. But it does seem like a large number of injuries in one club. The backroom staff are fantastic. Mm -hmm. They must be sat there thinking, w why is this so as well? I think it's interesting actually because you know, I've, I've been to clubs where I've, I've been doing training and the, the, I've had a tap on the shoulder from the fitness condition to say, you know, we're starting to get in, if you like, the red zone where you can get. You know, and I'm, I, I've turned around to say, so listen, I want, them, I want them to be there. Mm -hmm. I exp I'm, I'm trying to get a more intense level of training now. The balance has to be struck rightly. But in, in, I mean, lots of ways, the fitness. You know, the health department, they drive training now. They're so in touch with it. It's very much respond to what the player needs. Talking about United, their opponents are Arsenal, as we mentioned already. They're having their own problems. and They have a history of injury problems as far as their fans are concerned. Matthew Debussy, of course, Mesut Ozil, just two of, you know, quite a few names who, who, who could well be missing at the weekend. Yeah, I mean, take Debussy, for example. <clears throat> That's quite a significant ankle injury there. And my concern is that there's, there's a ligament that sits between the two bones in the lower leg. You know, we're run sure from what the football club are telling us as to whether he's damaged those as well as the ligament. You know, he, would, I'm sure, would be in an air cast boot. He's got to come back slowly from that. That's quite a significant damage. You've got a shoe with studs in going into a, into a surface where there's lots of twisting and turning. It's a high-risk area. You can't challenge bone healing times, you can't challenge ligament healing times. They need to take their time over that. But generally, rehab for these conditions is, is quite robust. It starts quite quickly, and they'll start to get a really good idea with that player. Are you surprised at the length of time we keep talking about the injury situation at Arsenal? Yeah, especially when you look, I mean, the players are coming off the pitch and rumoured to be going through this kind of cool-down pool where, you know, the water surrounds supposed to increase the rate at which lactic acid is removed from the legs, and there's some fairly decent research coming out to support it. They're thinking of everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I imagine that, that Arsene Wenger is sat there going, I mean, literally, we're uncovering every stone. It's like Dave Brailsford with British Cycling. He's really thinking about it, mm. and yet still, you know, but is it just a sport where this is an occupational hazard? Do you know what, the also scenario, is the other more worrying thing mm. would be, uh, look at the Mesut Ozil thing, where we're talking about a situation where he should be back. Now, that's like another seven, seven weeks. Seven weeks, that's right. I mean, one, is it, is it misdiagnosed? Is it re-injury? 
And my view is, I know that, it, that injuries are now much more active, your players are much more active in recovery of injuries, but there has to be a very fine balance between you know, making sure you don't re-injure rather than, you know, and delay the process even further. And I think that, that, that Mo, Mesut Ozil, he, he couldn't end up costing Arsene Wenger dearly. He's, he's an outstanding talent. Is, is it too much of a general question to ask how can you get away from these kind of injuries, from reoccurring, for example, for the likes of Mesut Ozil? Well, listen, there, there's, there's huge evidence to suggest that, you know, for example, when you, you look at the knee um, and you take some of the players at the moment out with a, ACL injuries, mm. there, there's a very, very high risk factor of them injuring the good side when they come back. Um, and so you need to look at the balance between, well, OK, we're looking at one side, what's happening with the other side mm. when we come back. Players are, are being put through really you know, very high-end rehab programmes, but the manager, the pressure, get them back on the yeah. pitch, get them back on the pitch. Are they going back too early? There's, there's a whole host of injuries. We're talking about ankles, we're talking about knees. You know, we need to get these things sorted out nice and quickly. OK. Paul, Ian, thanks very much. Sure. Indeed. Now, it's been 100 years since the beginning of World War I, and the centenary commemorations continue across the world. Football plays a huge part in bringing individuals together, and the Premier League is at the forefront. As